Hello and welcome to South Asia Today, a show that provides you the glimpses of South Asia. I'm your host Shivangi Mishra. Let's begin with the headlines first. Hungry and cold Afghanistan's children are getting sick. POK staring at famine as unprecedented food crisis hits Pakistan. And people in India celebrates Makar Sankranti and Lori with fervor. Let's begin the show. Economic indicators, military might or diplomacy could be the parameters used to determine the rank and reputation of a country. But above it all, it is the country's people, resident or non-resident, and their actions and accomplishments which build and strengthen the legacy of a country. In the case of India, non-resident Indians or NRIs have created an identity of India, one which is valued and held in high regard. Indeed, NRIs are one of the strongest assets of India. Let's take a closer look at how non-resident Indians have further oiled the wheels of the rapidly moving India juggernaut. Nearly a decade ago, the former US President Barack Obama advised his countrymen and policymakers to strengthen their education system. He believed that Indians, among a few other nationalities, would out-educate and out-compete Americans for jobs. In 2018, a report by the Seattle Times, a U.S. daily, confirmed Mr. Obama's concerns. According to the publication, 40% of the foreign-born tech workforce in the city which is home to Microsoft, Amazon, and Boeing, was of Indian origin. This trend is not unique to Seattle, and Seattle is a microcosm of U.S. industrial trends. Indians have repeatedly punched above their weight to show the world what Indianness is and the unique skill set and culture alongside. India organizes Pravasi Bhartiya Devas annually to celebrate and honor non-resident Indians' multi-layered contributions around the world, ranging from their direct contribution to the Indian Treasury to their actions leading to the strengthening of Brand India. All Pravasi Bharatiyon ko videsi dharti par Bharat ka rashtra dut Brand Ambassador kehta Your role as India's brand ambassador is diverse. You are brand ambassadors of Make in India. You are brand ambassadors of Yoga and Ayurveda. You are also brand ambassadors of India's cottage industries and handicrafts. At the same time, you are also brand ambassadors of India's millets. There are numerous ways how Indians have excelled and dominated sectors throughout the world with their skills and their everlasting will to create an impact. Google Sundar Pichai, Microsoft Satya Nadella, and former MasterCard CEO Ajay Banga are prime examples of Indian skill will, and success throughout the world. The Indian identity and its unique characteristics are not only confined to STEM subjects. How can one ever forget the greatest Indian NRI to have ever lived, Mahatma Gandhi, who later returned to his motherland to lead the independence movement? According to a United Nations report, Indians comprised the world's largest diaspora in 2020, with approximately 18 million people living abroad. The contribution of NRIs has been an instrumental and integral part of the Indian growth story as well, with the World Bank predicting a 100 billion USD contribution through remittances alone. Indian diaspora through remittances, through investments, and in general by improving India's image, by getting technology and management know-how, uh, so we must remember that it's not just brain drain, it's brain drain, it's brain circulation. I think the Indian diaspora has been absolutely critical. 
The Indian government began celebrating NRIs in 2003, and they have not stopped. There is a common saying among many throughout the world that more Indians means more positivity. Non-resident Indians have proven time and time again that this saying is not a mere conjecture. Indians and their contributions have made the world a better place. As New Delhi employs a host of measures to usher in an atmosphere of unity and brotherhood across the world through its agency in the form of G20 president or UNSC membership or other opportunities, Indians living outside of India are ensuring the world is convinced that Indians are truly an embodiment of skills, passion, humanity, and compassion. Moving on. As if the stories of despair and depravity were not enough, the Taliban ruled Afghanistan is now staring at another crisis, which is manifesting itself in the form of health emergency. While the Taliban's opaque administrative model has barred media and people from accessing genuine information about any diseases or health, an outbreak in pneumonia cases and their sudden spike, especially among children, has set the alarm bells ringing for local authorities as well as the international community, which has remained a mute spectator since the Taliban took control of the region in August 2021. The pneumonia ward of Indira Gandhi Children's Hospital in Kabul is full of sick infants, suffering from lung infections and other respiratory diseases. Children lay on a single bed with their concerned parents and some overworked hospital staff keeping an eye on them. The worried mothers of these children could be seen holding tiny oxygen masks to infants' faces. 22-year-old Mariam is among them. من پیش دکتر بردمش سینه و بغل بود دو بار سطح طفل بردمش شربت دادش جور نشد بار سیوم گفت بستر میشه و یتش خراب از زیاد سینه شدید گرفته بود باز بسترش کرد دیگه و یک یک و نیم هزار نخصهش میشد پاینس هزار پیشه گرفتیم دیگه دیگهش منده بود متوقعش نیمیشه خریدیم Malnutrition and pollution have caused a massive increase in the number of children suffering from pneumonia. According to a report by Reuters, Mohammad Arif Hassanzai, the head of internal medicine at Indira Gandhi Children's Hospital in Kabul, said that, our patients have increased compared to the past. The main reason is the economy. Low-income families, ever the more common, are forced to use low-quality coal to warm their homes. They are collecting tires, shoes, and waste to burn, which is ultimately increasing pollution levels throughout the country. Malnutrition has also been cited as a contributing factor to the increase in pneumonia and other respiratory cases among infants and children in Afghanistan, causing weakened immune systems. Facing a grim choice between warming their homes or eating, Afghans have been left in pain and hopelessness. Unfortunately, the crisis in the country is likely to worsen. Over 180 international organizations have suspended operations during the crucial winter months as a result of the ban on female NGO workers. These organizations are unable to function in the conservative nation without female staff to reach out to children and women. Returning to its own Sharia-based rule, the Taliban is attempting to erase women from public life and erase any progress made in the last two decades. What they've done? is to try to sentence Afghan uh, women and girls to uh, a dark future uh, without opportunity. And the bottom line is that no country is going to be able to succeed, much less thrive, if it denies half its population the opportunity uh, to contribute. Um, and to be clear, and we're engaged with other countries on this right now, there are going to be costs if this is not reversed, if this is not changed. 
Afghanistan is facing isolation and suspension of humanitarian operations over restrictions on women. The country is in a deep state of crisis. However, the Taliban have made it clear that they will not be reversing their latest decrees. Despite repeated multilateral and bilateral discussions, little progress has been made since the Taliban takeover in August of 2021. So far, 2023 appears full of disappointment and sadness for Afghanistan's most disenfranchised. With each day bringing a new blow, the future appears hopeless and bleak. Now let's take a look at a few happenings in Asia in a segment called Asia Watch. 33 years old office worker Park Sang Seon sometimes spends his lunch break at a nap cafe in Seoul where overworked people can have a rest. The South Korean government is set to announce a labor reform bill next month, which it hopes will bring some flexibility to its workforce and help people like Park. But not many are convinced that their work life balance will change for the better. More than 18% of South Koreans worked more than 50 hours in a week in the world's 10th largest economy in 2021, according to unpublished data from the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Under the new bill, workers will be able to choose how much overtime work they can take on a weekly, monthly or even a yearly basis. A departure from the 52-hour work week enacted in 2018 in hopes of improving the quality of life. The government believes that by providing more labor flexibility, workers will end up working less in the end, but it also means that people can work up to 69 hours in one week every month. Around 100 people lit candles at a gathering in Kathmandu at Tribhuvan International Airport in memory of the crashed victims on board the Yeti Airlines ATR-72 aircraft carrying 72 people, which crashed on January 15. The plane on a scheduled flight from Kathmandu to Pokhara gateway to the scenic Anpurna mountain range was carrying 57 Nepalese, 5 Indians, 4 Russians, 2 South Koreans and 1 person each from Argentina, Ireland, Australia and France. Videos provided by the Nepal Army showed rescue efforts as officials tried to move Tipris at the crash site. There are nine domestic airlines in Nepal, including Yeti Airlines and its unit Tara Air. Yeti and Tara plane crashes have killed at least 165 people in Nepal since 2000, out of a total of 359 dead from aviation accidents according to data from the Civil Aviation Authority of Nepal. An additional 75 people have died in helicopter crashes this century in Nepal, which is home to eight of the world's 14 highest mountains, including Everest, and where sudden weather changes can make hazardous conditions. Japanese citizens have started thronging various shrines and temples as the Japanese New Year has officially begun. Omikuji are fortune-telling papers that predicts future. Shikihu Kujin are the seven lucky gods of good luck. Witnessing these scenes during the Japanese New Year is quite a common sight. During this month of January in 2023, many people visited the Shinzoji Temple in Asakusa, Tokyo to pay their New Year's visit. Due to the new coronavirus, the number of visitors to Senjoji Temple for Hatsumote had reduced. New Year's visits have been restricted for the last two years. So this year, fewer people paid the homage to Hatsumode at Senjoji Temple. Hatsumode is the first visit to a shrine or temple in the new year. This is a traditional Japanese New Year's event. People are thankful for the past year and pray for a safe and peaceful year ahead. Visitors to Japanese shrines and temples can draw an omikoji. Omikoji is often drawn to predict good or bad luck. Basically, there is a range from good luck to bad luck. At Sensoji Temple, visitors who have drawn a bad fortune tie it to Mikuji Kake to make that wish the bad fortune will turn into a good one. The seven gods of good fortune are enshrined in Japanese temples and shrines. 
Many shrines and temples open the seven lucky gods to the public only during this time in the new year. In particular, it is said that visiting all temples and shrines where the seven lucky gods are enshrined during this period will bring great happiness. Therefore, many visitors who come to worship pray to the seven lucky gods. In Japan, many people have had their jobs affected by the new coronavirus for the past three years. Many Japanese people come to Hatsumode wearing Japanese kimonos and westerns enjoying the scenery at Japanese temples and shrines. In Japan, people can now move freely. Many people can be seen praying for a prosperous new year. Japan is a popular tourist destination all around the world. Beautiful picturesque sceneries and architectural wonders such as Mount Fuji and Kyoto which are visited by many tourists from around the world. Last October, Japanese government decided to promote travel to domestic travel and ease the entry of foreign tourists. The tourism business in Japan is picking up pace in 2023. In the new year 2023, it is crowded with tourists in Tokyo are flocking the Imperial Palace, Tokyo Station made of bricks and the sky tree of the 634-meter-high observation tower. These are so popular spots for tourists at Tokyo. The downtown area of Tokyo is called Ginza. There are luxury brand stores and large departmental stores. The pedestrian paradise event, which had been cancelled in COVID-19, resumed last year. During the weekend and national holidays, the road is open for visitors. The worldwide tourism industry in Japan is energized by the rebound in inbound travel. Pakistan is in the throes of inflation and poverty. And the region of POK, which has been under its illegal occupation for over seven decades, is undergoing its worst ever food crisis. Thousands are living under desperate poverty. And when there is an acute shortage of food, including the staples, the skyrocketing inflation has just added to the woes. The government, which is accused of indifference and discrimination, has remained a mute spectator all this while. The illegally occupied region of POK is staring at a catastrophe as an unprecedented food crisis that was caused fundamentally due to the failed Pakistani policies has now spiraled out of control. While on one hand, the government supply of subsidized wheat has nearly stopped altogether, the prices of other essentials have skyrocketed on the other. Stores and grocery shops are running out of kitchen staples. The shortage of wheat flour has led to an increase in the prices of bread and bakery items too. The desperate situation has triggered chaos and some clashes among people were also seen in the region in the past few days. The locals blame the government for the situation. जब तक हमारे जायज मतालबात पूरे नहीं होंगे तो तब तक गैर महीना मुद्दत के लिए हम ये एतजाज होता रहेगा और इसका दायरा कार हम वसी भी कर सकते हैं एक जिले से दूसरे तक तीसरे तक और जितने आजाद कश्मीर भर में तो इसका हम वसी तर कर सकते हैं ये इसका दायरा तो इसके साथ ही मैं इंतजामिया से गुजारिश करूंगा कि जितना जल्दी हो सकता है गरीब आवाम अगर रोटी के लिए तरसेंगे तो इसके लिए हम जिम्मेदार नहीं हैं इसके लिए जिम्मेदारी जो भी होगी वो इंतजामिया की होगी सम सेड वीट वॉज द की कंपोनेंट ऑफ द पी ओ के पीपल्स फूड बास्केट एंड डिप्राइविंग दैम ऑफ द स्टेपल कैन हैव कैटस्ट्रॉफिक कॉन्सिक्वेंसिस Local said this was the latest blow in the series of troubles that has affected their basic needs and their standard of living. Mal bahut mehanga jo hamari pahunch se dur ho gaya hai. Hum bewas ho gaye hain. Baar baar humne meeting bhi ki intezami hamare saath koi taawun nahi kar rahi. Iski wajah se humne aaj to dur bilkul band kar diye. Mal mehanga hai, akhrajat pure hi nahi ho rahe. Har aadmi makroz hai hamari tarah hum bhi is महंगाई के दौर में चक्की में पैसे जा रहे हैं आटा मैदा घी 
کاریگار اخراجات بہت زیادہ ہو گئے ہیں جس کی وجہ سے اس ریٹ پہ ہمیں کوئی فائدہ بھی نہیں ہے اس سے بہتر ہے کہ پھر بند کر دیا آج آٹے کی قیمت اتنی زیادہ اوپر چلی گئی ہے ہم انتظامیہ کے پاس جاتے ہیں تو ہمیں وہ ریٹ نہیں جاری کر رہے ہم کدھر سے مہنگا آٹا لے کے سستی روٹی فروخت کریں ہمارے وس میں نہیں ہے ہم قوت کے خسارے ہم تو نہیں پورے کر سکتے آج ہمیں آٹے پنڈی اسلام آباد سے آتے ہیں کشمیر کی جو فروغ میرا ہے سرکاری میل اس کا آٹا تو ہمیں مل ہی نہیں رہا وہ پتہ نہیں کدھر جا رہا ہے کہاں پہ جا رہا ہے کوئی پتہ نہیں ہے ہاں وہ آٹا تو ادھر کسی کے پاس ہے ہی نہیں ہے کسی گھر میں کسی کو نہیں مل رہا وہ بلیک ہو رہا ہے کوئی پتہ نہیں کیا ہو رہا ہے دیر از نو ڈینائنگ دا فیکٹ دا لاسٹ ایئرس فلڈس لیفٹ اے میسو ٹریل آف ڈسٹرکشن وچ ان دا ریجن اٹ ہیڈ اے سیویئر امپیکٹ آن دی ایگریکلچرل پروڈیوس ٹو بٹ آلسو کین ناٹ بی ڈینائڈ از دا ویل ڈاکیومینٹیڈ فنومن دیٹ دی الیگلی آکیوپائڈ ریجن آف پی او کے ہیز آلویز بین اکارڈیڈ اے نو ورکل ٹریٹمنٹ بائی لیڈرز ان اسلام آباد If Pakistani endures any form of crisis, then its gravity compounds by several fold in POK. People in POK have been at the receiving end of discrimination for over seven decades, and the situation continues to remain so even today. Moving on, spring season is all set to spread its wings in India. Popularly known as Makar Sankranti, the period where winter slowly fades into spring is celebrated in different forms in different regions of the country. From Pongal to Lori, let's see how the country welcomes Uttarayan this year. India got soaked in festive fever as it observed Makar Sankranti, the most ancient Hindu festival dedicated to God's son. During this period, sun ends its southward journey and starts moving northwards. The festival also marks the first day of sun's transit into the zodiac sign Makar or Capricorn. Though observed as harvest festival, its cultural significance as well as way of celebration varies across the country. In cities lining the holy rivers, especially Ganga like Haridwar, Ayodhya and Patna, Millions of Hindus brave the cold temperatures and begin the day by taking a dip in the holy waters. Their gesture is believed to have the power to wash away all the sins. They also make a tuladan, a tradition where devotees make offerings to priests and the poor. Makar Sankranti ke apsar pe Maa Ganga ne bulaya, to bas esnan karne chalaya. Esnan karne se hi lagta hai ki man me paavan bhaavna a jati hai. मकर संक्रांति के प्रति जो श्रद्धा है इसीलिए तो हम इतने ठंड के बावजूद यहाँ नहाने आए हैं ठंड तो बहुत ज़्यादा मतलब नहाने के लिए हिम्मत चाहिए और ये हिम्मत हमारी श्रद्धा से ही आई है इन स्टेट्स लाइक पंजाब हिमाचल प्रदेश एंड कैपिटल न्यू दिल्ली द फेस्टिवल इज सेलिब्रेटेड एज लोरी दैट कोमेमोरेट्स दी हार्वेस्टिंग ऑफ द राबी और विंटर क्रॉप एंड ऑल्सो मार्क्स द बिगिनिंग ऑफ अ न्यू ईयर फॉर द सिक्स The beats of drums and the inviting flames of a bonfire that defy the freezing winds marks the celebration of this auspicious occasion. As a part of the ritual, eatables such as dry fruits, popcorn, sesame seed and molasses are first thrown in the fire and later served to everyone, spreading abundance and happiness all around. आप देख ही रहे हैं लोड़ी का त्यौहार हर जगह बैंड बाजे बज रहे हैं और सब लोग खुशियों से मना रहे हैं इसको और ये खुशियों का त्यौहार है सब लोग एक दूसरे से मिल के मनाते हैं इसको तो आज हम सभी हमारे बेटा हुआ है पहली लोड़ी है और इसी के साथ हमारे सब रिश्तेदार आए हुए हैं और हम पहली लोड़ी आज बड़े धूमधाम से सभी लोगों के बीच में मना रहे हैं Skies of northern and western parts of India were adorned with colorful kites as kite flying is an important ritual of the festival. Hundreds of people gather on their rooftops to fly kites and even battle against each other for aerial supremacy. Kite festivals were also organized all around the country where locals and tourists enjoyed the winter breeze and flew kites. बहुत ज़्यादा पतंगें उड़ती हैं आज के दिन स्पेशली आज जो होती है वो हम लोग की सालाना पतंग पे होती है एक ही कलर की पतंग उड़ती है जैसे एक कलर मैं नीला उड़ाऊंगा तो ये भाई जो हैं ये हरा उड़ा सकते हैं तो ऐसे करके पतंग लड़ती है आज के दिन ऐसे ही पतंग रखी जाती है जिसमें तैरी भोज भी होता है हम लोगों का 
In Tamil Nadu, Makar Sankranti is celebrated as Pongal. During the festival, women make beautiful rangolis, cook rice and milk in earthen pots and watch it overflowing. After adding freshly harvested grains, it is offered to God's son, which is considered as a sign of abundance as it brings fortune to farmers' life. Pungal is made for the farmers, so we have to take the new chawal after the first chawal. If the first chawal is not the power of the Surya Bhagavan, then it can't happen. When the Surya Bhagavan is given to the Surya Bhagavan, the nature is given to the Surya Bhagavan, the Surya Bhagavan is given to the Surya Bhagavan. Now if you pan towards northeastern India, the festival is observed as Bhogali Bihu, especially in Assam. During the occasion, people erect a traditional bonfire called Meiji, a house made of straw, and burn it during the celebration. Various types of rice cakes and other sweets are also prepared during the festival. Assam me har prant me. बराग हो या ब्रह्मपुत्र हो पहाड़ हो या घाटी हो हर प्रांत में आज भूगाली भी हो माग भी हो मनाया जा रहा है बड़े धूमधाम से किसानों का त्यौहार है और सारे देश में अलग अलग नामों से मकर संक्रांति को आज बड़े किसान और हमारे देश के जनता बहुत भक्ति भावनाओं से इसको मना रहा है मैं सबको आज देश की जनता को विशेष रूप से किसान जनता को मैं हृदय से शुभकामना देता हूँ मकर संक्रांति इज नॉट ओनली अ फेस्टिवल बट ऑल्सो दिम्बल ऑफ लाइफ विच शोज द इनक्रेडिबल डाइवर्सिटी ऑफ कल्चर्स एंड ट्रेडिशन इन इंडिया एज एंटायर नेशन वेलकम्स द हार्वेस्ट सीजन अमिट्स द फ्रीजिंग टेम्परेचर इन फ्रॉस्टी नाइट्स एंड फॉग दिस फेस्टिवल ब्रिंग्स वॉम ऑफ जॉय एंड हैपीनेस It's time for me to wrap up today's episode. We'll be back next week at the same time. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of South Asia today. Goodbye and take care.